Hi everyone, welcome in. I'm Graham from Guru Focus. Today we are going to revisit one of our most popular videos and look at how investors can apply Peter Lynch's stock picking strategy in 2022. Make sure to stick around to the end of the video where we run a screen for Peter Lynch's ideal fast growers that could be the next big 10 baggers in investor portfolios. If you haven't already, make sure to click that big red button down below and subscribe to our channel for all of our upcoming videos. Now, we'll go ahead and kick things off with a little bit of background on Peter Lynch. He was the head of Fidelity's Magellan Fund for 13 years, where he managed to stack up an average annualized return of 29.3%. He was famous for buying over 110 baggers over the course of his history with Magellan. These are companies that returned a 1,000% or more throughout their history. Lynch found a great balance of growth and value investing throughout his career and developed a strategy of GARP investing or growth at a reasonable price. He also wrote three books, One Up on Wall Street, Beating the Street, and Learn to Earn, which have all become standard readings for most investors. Throughout his career, he maintained an invest-in-what-you-know philosophy, where he only bought into companies whose businesses he could understand. Now, Peter Lynch defined six different categories of stocks that investors can look at for opportunities. The first of these is slow growers. These are large and aging companies that are expected to grow slightly faster than GDP for the rest of their history. They generally pay generous regular dividends because they cannot think of other new ways to go ahead and expand their business. Stalwarts, on the other hand, see about 10 to 12 percent annual earnings growth, and Lynch sought to get around a 30 to 50 percent gain from these stocks. He wasn't looking to make a killing off of them. Generally, they offer up some good protection during recessions and downturns, and you want to buy them undervalued and then sell them once you get to their fair price. Now, next up, we have fast growers, which is where you can start finding some of these big money plays. These are small and aggressive new enterprises, generally growing at 20 to 25 percent per year. This is the land of 10 baggers and more. These companies do not need to be long specifically to a fast growing industry. Sometimes it's better if they aren't. Looking for a clean balance sheet and profitability is key for most of these, as some of the most successful investments have had profits from the beginning of time. You want to be careful not to buy in at the end of the growth phase, as the earnings multiple will reduce for these fast growers as they begin to transition towards being a stalwart or even a slow grower. Continuing on, we have cyclicals, and here you want to think automobiles, things like that. The industry will expand and contract in cycles, generally rising, coming out of recessions, and then falling hard in downturns. Many oftentimes will mistake these as stalwarts, but here the key thing, timing is everything. Like I said, if you can catch it on that rise out of the recession, you'll do good. If you buy just before one of those downturns, though, you'll get hit pretty hard. Next up, we have turnarounds, which are companies that have been battered, depressed, or are near bankruptcy. They're not growing, and generally, these are pretty big risk, big reward type of situations. Uh, I think back to Hertz, for example, late last year, ended up going bankrupt, actually falling into that bankruptcy, then was relisted after being pulled out of it. These are very difficult to invest in because you need an in-depth understanding of a company's financials. You'll want to know its debt and that structure of the debt, CEO plans for the turnaround, and you'll have to actually be able to forecast those turnaround efforts. Generally, the focus here is on debt and their load structure. Rounding on our list is going to be asset plays, also referred to as net nets, as coined by legendary investor Benjamin Graham. These are companies that are sitting on assets that are worth more than their stock price at current day value. So they could go ahead and sell everything within their business and actually earn more money than if they were to be acquired at those share prices. These assets could be anything from cash, real estate, mineral rights, patents, TV station, uh, tax loss carry forward, the list goes on and on and on. The main idea here uh, with these types of asset plays is that you put in some money and you set a limit order so that you don't get burned here. Now, if these companies are losing money, however, they will eventually eat through the value of those assets and those assets will be worth less over time. So just keep that in mind if you are trying to make an asset play here. Now, Peter Lynch generally chose to focus on two of these categories, the stalwarts and the fast growers. Looking first to the stalwarts, again, they generally see a 10 to 12 percent annual earnings growth and are mostly mid to large cap stocks that most people will be familiar with. Peter Lynch famously developed his own chart for these types of companies that compares the price of the company with a price to earnings line of 15. 
Now, looking at an example here, we can see that it's fairly obvious when a company is trading on either side of this line. The PE line of 15 gives a rough idea of what most stocks should be worth. Here at Guru Focus, we added an additional line at a median PE without NRI, which we think is a little bit more applicable to most companies. For these types of companies, though, their price is almost always following earnings in some form or another throughout their history. As the market can be inefficient over short periods of time, stocks that are trading below their earnings line are generally a good deal. If they were trading significantly below this line, Peter Lynch would then buy into that company and would sell shares if they rose over it. Keep in mind here, though, that he was looking at annual numbers and didn't have the amount of data that we were looking at here today. Now, while the Peter Lynch chart is generally applicable to most companies, it doesn't work for all of them. Looking here to Amazon, you can see that there isn't that same correlation that we saw previously. It is a growth company, however, it doesn't seem that the line matches up here. In a sense, Wall Street has given this company a free pass to kind of do its thing without being challenged on those earnings. Amazon's price instead follows revenue, not earnings. So if we toss on a price to sales line here, things look a little bit more coordinated compared to that line. The second category of stocks is fast growers, which are generally small and aggressive new enterprises. Keep in mind here, though, that it is harder for a $20 billion company to grow to $200 billion than for a $20 million company to grow to $200 million. The companies Lynch looked at were generally growing between 20 and 35% a year, and Lynch was turned off by anything growing faster than 35% a year because he believed that that growth was not sustainable over the long term. These fast growers are the land of 10 baggers and where investors can find some massive gains. Lynch's rule of thumb for these companies was to find those with a P.E. ratio less than their growth rate. So if a company is growing at 25% per year, you want to be looking for something with a P.E. of 25 or less. The best tool for identifying these buying opportunities is called the PEG ratio, which is the P.E. divided by its growth rate. Peter Lynch was generally looking for something at a PEG ratio of less than 1, and those would pass his test. Now, we threw a lot of information at you on how Peter Lynch thought about the stock market and the different strategies he used to go ahead and find the land of 10 baggers and make these crazy returns over time. But to take all of this and put it into practice, we're going to go ahead and run a screen for what Peter Lynch defined as the ideal fast grower. According to Lynch, this type of company would maintain the following characteristics. It'll be at a market cap of less than $5 billion. So here we're only going to look at small to mid cap stocks. From there, a debt to equity ratio of less than 0.4 is what we are looking for. So we want a company, for example, that has maybe $100 million in debt, but it has $500 million in assets. Next up, ideally we want this company to have predictable revenue and earnings. So we're going to go ahead and set a predictability of three stars and better. Continuing on, looking at some numbers now, a five-year EBITDA growth of 20 to 35 percent is what Peter Lynch liked to work off of. We're also going to go ahead and add in a 10-year EBITDA growth of greater than 15 percent. We'll toss on that peg ratio being less than one, and we're going to go ahead and remove our over-the-counter stocks. Now, from our screen, we find four different results that qualify as ideal Peter Lynch fast growers. Additionally, each one of these companies is trading at fair to undervalued ratings based upon our GF value line, so they offer up some great ideas for value investors to take a look at. Wrapping things up today, we want to emphasize that Peter Lynch's old school strategy is still very applicable to today's overvalued market. Investors can still find these opportunities, and we encourage anyone new to Guru Focus to use their free seven day trial to come check out our pre-made Peter Lynch screens and generate some great ideas. As always though, please make sure to do your own research or consult a registered investment advisor before making any investment decisions. If you haven't already, click that big red button down below to subscribe we really do appreciate it and make sure to drop a like on the video if you did enjoy it if we missed anything today or you think there's things that we could have done better comment below and let us know so we can make better videos for you in the future that's it for today and we'll see you next time